practically I'm thinking about you the book as you know is men who've walked with God and there are phrases in this book that are precious they are jewels so I wanted to read them to you and see if they give you 
a feeling of great wealth and joy and happiness. The book is uh, Men Who Have Worked With God. It's written in 1945, and you know, of course, nowadays you wouldn't say men who have walked with God, you would say people, persons who have walked with God. And uh, this particular section is about Meister Eckhart, uh, who was a person who truly seemed to walk with God. And it was like the 1400s and the 1500s, just before the Renaissance. And we wonder, do you remember back on when I was reading uh, chapter 5 of Matthew, the uh, fifth chapter started out with a sermon on the Mount. Multitudes were following Christ. He was very, very popular. And he leads off with, blessed are the poor in spirit. Do you understand that? I do not. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? And you'll find out why we didn't understand it when we tell you, I read you in here, uh, what it does mean. I asked this minister, I asked that minister, I asked this person, that person, this year's score, that year's score. None of them could come up with the uh, answer. They kept thinking, poor in spirit, blessed are the poor. Well, Christ meant blessed are the poor. Christ would have said blessed are the poor. No, that's not what it means. Who are the poor in spirit? Listen to this. This is what Master Ica said. Day is beautiful. What day is it? D Day. Oh. You remember D Day, Franklin? You were in D Day. What horror you saw. What horror you escaped. How you ever got home a year later. June the 6th, 1943. One to 44. And June the 3rd is Franklin's birthday. And he is many years old up in heaven. The poor in spirit are those who to prepare their souls for the entry of the divine spirit have divested themselves of selfish thoughts, selfish thinking, and selfish actions. That finally is what it means. And this whole thing of being on a higher plane and communing with God uh, touches upon one of the essentials to get yourself out of the way. What do you think of that? To get yourself out of the way. This is Master Eichert being quoted. External poverty is good and praiseworthy in people who take it upon themselves willingly in love of our Lord. For he practiced it in the earthly sphere. That's the first level of poverty. This all fits in with all the talk of the economy, doesn't it? Yeah, everywhere you go, all over the country, people talk about the economy. They're going to do this or they're not going to do this. It's all because of the economy. We're talking about poverty. And let's say it again. External poverty is good and praiseworthy, and people who take it upon themselves willingly for the love of our Lord. Poor in spirit. Second level, I think, is but a person should be poor in will. Willing as little and desiring as little as when he did not yet exist. I get that, don't you? Get rid of your will. The first level of poverty is like St. Francis's poverty, where they took a vow for poverty. And unfortunately, the Franciscans, uh, as they went on, uh, ignored that. But St. Francis took a vow of poverty. That, and now we have the kind of poverty where a person gets rid of his will. <laughs> Sounds like whether the will is a lawsuit. A person should be as empty of all knowledge, as unburdened by human opinion, as when the person came from God in order to open the way to God's will. The third level of poverty, Eckhart says, is most inward and most actual that a person have nothing. At that point, uh, Eckhart expounds one of the subtlest and extremest doctrines in all his philosophy. The not having this emptying of the will must constitute so great a renunciation that the desire for God, even the place for God to come into, is to be driven from consciousness. Only utter non-being is an intimate enough sort of poverty. Well, let's go back to the first level of poverty. We know what that is. Wasn't John the Baptist who said, if you have two boats, you have one to somebody else? We know what that first level of poverty is. Now the second level of poverty is to be rid of yourself. 
that's not a bad idea. Get rid of yourself. Well, uh, so what I do with this book, the book that I have from the library, and it's an intro loan. Uh, somebody who took it out highlighted many, many pages in yellow. And that's, that's a terrible thing to do. It's not your property. Uh, people are being kind enough to loan it to you. Why should you abuse it? Now, my neighbor Mary went onto the internet and she found a bookseller in Bridgeport, Pennsylvania, who had uh, a copy of Men Who Have Walked With God by Sheldon Sheen, published by Knopf. And it was, they described the condition of it, and it was good enough. And it was five dollars, and something like five dollars for shipping. And she ordered it for us in two days! So I have that copy, and it's pristine. Nobody has highlighted it in yellow. So I'm going to ask my library if they would like me to get my copy, and I'll keep the copy there then. Um, desecrated. So, while I'm waiting for this to be all resolved, on my copy machine, I copy the pages that I'm reading, because I want to highlight them. And so that's what I did for you, I highlighted these. Just to go over them a few to see if they give you the pleasant, joyous feelings they give me. I hope they do. Be full of things to be empty of God, and to be empty of things is to be full of God. Be nice. Who said that? Eckhart. Monster Eckhart. And that's all I found for you on those three pages. And what page is it in book uh, 198? No. Let's go to 200. Nothing there. Here's and four spirit we've already discussed. Let's go to page 202 and see what I have it for you. Traitors of spiritual thought. It goes back to poverty, too. Instead of building your treasury up in the bank, and the banks are no good. They don't have any money anymore. They can't afford to give you interest anymore. These international bankers are really in bad shape. Uh, so let's build another kind of treasure that will give us more satisfaction. And what is that? A treasure of spiritual thought. Persuasion. It's a matter of persuasion here today. Am I persuading you of this? I guess I don't intend to. They aren't my words. They're either Cheney's words, Cheney's children, Cheney who wrote this book, or Eckhart's. Simple, reasoned faith to illuminated living. I think that's nice. I would like to see us have that. You and I. Illuminated living. Really illuminated living. Instead of this darkness that we're wandering around in. Paradox. What's a paradox? A paradox is a seemingly country statement. That you'll be happy if you're poor. You'll be happy if you're rich. I know that to be true. The part of God that is in every soul. See, the effort goes even farther to tell you, and I think I've said this long ago, that God is your soul. Your soul is God. And I think I even went further months ago when we were talking about this. Say that the Holy Spirit is God. What does the hymn say? Per, uh, yeah, perfect in power and love and purity. But that's not what I was looking for. It's pretty. Uh, God in the person, blessed Trinity. Yeah, that's it. God, soul, the Holy Spirit. Emptying the self of all that is not divine. That does us well, doesn't it? The part of God that is in every soul, emptying ourselves of all that is not divine. There is a person soul. The glory of that moment. Have you had moments like that? Can you help me have moments like that? Can I help you have moments like that? Empty is being stressed over and over again. And they refer to the kind of emptiness that Lao Tzu in 600 BC was living. And there again, that's a, a, a total beyondness, beyond the self. And I guess the only way to do it so far as I can figure. A perfected person will be so cleared of self. I agree. That's a necessary step to perfection. His joy will be in the escape from self. He wants only what God wants, and wants it God's way. People's minds toward God. A union with God that cannot be disturbed without, so long as the individual sincerely waits upon God. 
and the way to a life of Christ-like service and of spiritual communion. Now these people, you know, I've been telling you for months now to go along with God and find the treasure that God has for you. Get up at five o'clock and spend at least a couple hours or three hours on with God. Well, these people go at it more strenuously than that. I think they must spend days, days and days along with God. Page 204 is still the uh, chapter on Eckhart. I highlighted this for you. Regard to churchly routine, the mystic life, a friendly heartfelt reliance upon God, whose presence in the soul actuated their every thought and deed. St. Francis of Assisi was like that. Our Angelico was like that. Then it mentions enemies of God. What does that bring to your mind? It just doesn't seem to me that God could have any enemies at all. You say the devil, but what is the devil? Remember what I told you last month with my solution to the devil? Remember Dr. John MacArthur was screaming about, put on your armor, put on the armor of God, put on your breastplate, put on your helmet, put on your butt shoes, put on a... what covers your legs and go to battle because you're in a war, you're in a war against the devil. My answer to that was Matthew chapter 5 of your enemies. If, as he was saying, your big enemy is the devil, then love your enemies and see if you can't bring the devil around to the joy of being what we're trying to find. See if you can't do that and make the devil nice. No one will be rid of all this evil, all of this cruelty. Flight to the one. One capitalized. Poverty and charity. Yep. Uh, the many evils, saints, and mistakes. That was the right answer. Poverty and charity. And St. Francis certainly did. And St. Bernard. And Fra Angelico, the painter. And going back to the first couple of centuries after Christ, Plotinus. He's a very inspiring one to read. Lay women did charitable work, fed us, and Catherine. Well, I find it fascinating and, and so hopeful that it will help you and me. We read down. This one on page 12. Uh, since many of them professed a day and a illumination growing out of annihilation of self that God might be in them. That statement of the same thing we've been talking about, it, it's a beautiful statement of it. Since many of them professed a poverty and a holy illumination growing out of annihilation of self that God might be in them. Waldensians and the White Brothers. Okay, let's go on page 206. Well, if what happened the first time it snowed in Atlanta? It's about 85 degrees right now. What happened the first time it snowed in Atlanta? The natives thought it was an explosion at first. The universe considered as one great whole was God. I feel that very strongly that that's the way it is. That every person, by the power of contemplation and by calling on his mind from sensible and terrestrial objects, might be united to the deity capital B in an ineffable manner and become one with the source, capital S, inherent capital P of all things. I think we've expressed that before. And that they, who, by long and assiduous meditation, had plunged themselves, as it were, into an abyss of the divinity, acquired thereby a most glorious and sublime liberty, and were not only delivered from violence of sinful lusts, but even from the common instincts of nature. Bravo! A plus, a plus, a plus. One of the greatest and most admirable mass developments of spiritual mindedness and mystical attainment. Eckhart's idea. A conversion and an illum illumination in an ecstatic vision that said the bliss of eternal life. I can accept that as possible. Mystical experience, the constant mindfulness of God's presence. That's it too, folks. Constant reminder. You remember how I said we have to count pure thoughts, we have to count 15 blessings every hour, we have to rejoice about something every 15 minutes. Constant mindfulness of God's presence. A greater blessing than ecstatic flights in the union. Uh, now we're talking about somebody named Suso, S-U-S-O. 
around about Eckert's time. Transported to a region of indescribable spiritual joy by lay disciples who sought the mystic way. Way being quotes referring way back again to the 600 BC Walta, the Chinese essay. Looking into his inmost being, the people I go to church with, although they never talk about it, they never talk about God in, in church. They talk about going to the doctor and about their son in law and about their neighbors. They don't talk about God. Since many of them profess a poverty and a holy nation growing out of an annihilation of self that God might be in them. Well, what do you think? Do we have something here, folks, that's going to help you and me? What pages have we done? 201. 203. We've done 198, 199, and 210. I think we're about done. The Spiritual Tabernacle. Now, this one is about Reisrich. Autobiography of his own soul, the Christian mystic life, Ricebrook and the Admirable. To admire, admirable is to excite wonder, united with approbation, and deserving the utmost to see. There's only one I can think of who deserves that. They devote themselves to the mystic quest discipline necessary before attainment. The soul is a part of God. No, I think the soul is God. A gentleness, a compassion, a sweetness, a fresh simplicity, and the humanness of St. Francis or of Jesus. Withdrawal. What about being a hermit? Perfected in union with God. Christian communion with God. You can see why I kept thinking of you every time I came across one of these beautiful phrases. Alrighty. Let me check the video and the audio, and I'll tell you some jokes. It's real hard out here. And I'll give you the proof of that. Sorry, you. you want more food? I was thinking the other day, the old story of the... Marino for Friday, May 29th, Bob's birthday. Uh, boiled potato, beets, oh, isn't that a great color? And Only Star Farms, uh, original grills. They are the best, next to fried pets by where they foods.
This is the 30th of May, Saturday, and George and Linda and I are going to East Hampton, Massachusetts. And we opted not to go the heavily traveled speed highways. We're going to cross country, and actually East Hampton, Massachusetts is due east of uh, Indoor. This is Route 203, and the Deconic uh, Parkway crosses here. And it's about 9.30, isn't it? So we're going to toll free to Route 22, which is a very long route that comes all the way from, goes through the Bronx, and through Mount Vernon, and through Garcelle, and through White Plains, and it goes all the way up to Canada. But we're only going to go three miles on it, and we can through 20. Leak, Massachusetts. And when we get to the border, everybody, we have just our spangled banner. Where are we going? We're going to a funeral. And you can emphasize the first four letters, three letters of funeral are at the end. And this is going to be a fun funeral. <laughs> because Mr. Howard Buzzy, it's his funeral, but he's alive. And he always wanted to go to his own funeral, and we were invited. You not miss Long Island? Oh yeah, that's right. You miss the ocean in Long Island, huh? I, I told him it's better to live on the mainland. <laughs> yeah. But Long Island is free. And the ocean is lovely. Oh yes. Beautiful. Ta, 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 ta. Welcome to Massachusetts. There's the uh, Massachusetts Turnpike up uh, overhead. You know, do you notice almost immediately that New England has such a different look than uh, New York? Yeah, it does. We're looking, we're looking for Route 20. Something. The Kinderhook Library told me about this shortcut. Say again? I should go down there and get a library card. Yes, you should. And uh, the name, I'll give you some names. And tell them uh, Glendora sent you. Uh, Julie Johnson and Natalie D. Yeah, you should. It, it's a lovely library. Yeah, I went in there when we first moved here. You did? I, yeah, I had to get copies made of something. If you ever have to have copies made again, come to me. Well, now we have a copy machine. We bought it. The, oh. the printer we got for the computer has a copy machine on it. Oh, it does? It's a copier, it's a, copier a printer, and a, um, what's it? And a scanner. Oh. So. What, what kind is that? Lexmark. Say again? Lexmark. L E X M A R T? Yeah. Oh. All right, we want. Uh, Route 20. Right, we're still 102. Okay, now we have to ask. This is Route 20. Yep. And Route 20 goes to Springfield, Massachusetts. 
from Pittsfield, it goes to Albany, it goes clear across the state of New York. Route 5 and Route 20 are the east-west routes. And this is the Burke.